Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And in this lecture of guitar amplification and effects, I would like to talk about transformers. No, not those kinds of transformers. These kinds of transformers. In the previous lecture, we started digging into the Fender Champ amplifier, particularly the power amplification stage that drives the speaker through this output transformer. So in this lecture, we're not talking about the kind of transformer used in the power supply. We're talking about the kind of transformer used to couple the output tube to the speaker. This is something that transistor-based amplifiers don't need, and it adds considerable weight and cost to tube amplifiers. To make this schematic look a little more like the common cathode preamplifier stages we studied previously, we redrew it to look like this. Decomposing this common cathode amplifier into its DC bias and small signal circuits, we see something that's a little bit different compared to the kinds of common cathode preamplifier stages we looked at that were intended to achieve voltage gain. Namely, remember that transformers don't pass DC. So there's an impedance seen at the plate here. That's the impedance of the speaker reflected through the transformer. But the DC resistance of that coil is effectively zero. So it drops out of the bias part of the circuit altogether. And RK is the only resistor contributing to the bias, as we saw last time. Of course, if you hook an ohmmeter up to the transformer and measure the DC resistance, it won't be exactly zero, but it will be pretty small. It will be negligible compared with RK. One thing I should mention is that the kind of transformer you need for a single-ended output stage like this is a special kind of transformer that includes an air gap, and that allows the transformer to handle the DC current flowing through here, that bias current, without saturating. So that adds significantly to the cost of the transformer. The kind of transformer you use in a push-pull amplifier doesn't need that. We'll look at push-pull amplifiers in a future lecture. So the side of the transformer connected to the tube is called the primary, and the side connected to the speaker is called the secondary. Let NP represent the number of turns of the primary coil, and NS represent the number of turns of the secondary coil. We'll define a voltage across the primary and a voltage across the secondary, VP and VS. We'll also define currents, IP and IS, going through the primary and the secondary respectively. Note the direction of the arrows. The turns ratio is defined as the number of turns of the primary over the number of turns of the secondary. And the voltages across the coils have the relationship that VP over VS, the voltage of the primary over the voltage of the secondary, is equal to the turns ratio. The currents, on the other hand, have a reciprocal relationship with the turns ratio. So from these expressions, we could say that the voltage across the secondary is the voltage across the primary divided by the turns ratio. Similarly, the current going through the secondary is equal to the current going through the primary times the turns ratio. Notice if I were to multiply the quantities on the left and multiply the quantities on the right, the turns ratio cancel. And I see that the power on one side of the transformer is the same as the power on the other side of the transformer. Let me write down an Ohm's law style expression and say that the impedance of the load is the voltage across the secondary divided by the current through the secondary. Similarly, we'll say the impedance reflected by the transformer can be written as the voltage across the primary divided by the current across the primary. Let me use the expressions on the right here in order to rewrite this in terms of the quantities associated with the secondary. So I can replace VP with TR times VS, and I can replace IP with IS divided by TR, and this gives me TR squared times VS over IS, which is the impedance of the load. So the turns ratio is the square root of the reflected impedance over the load impedance. And the reason I went through all of this work is that in the next lecture, it will be convenient to know what the turns ratio is. 
But a lot of transformers are not specified in terms of their turns ratio. They're specified in terms of some nominal reflected impedance associated with some nominal load. The schematic doesn't say anything about the output transformer, but a lot of folks sell transformers that are intended to be used in Fender Champs. So let's go look for one. Okay, so I found this transformer at an outfit called the Tube Amp Doctor. Oh, Euros, where is this? Oh, it's from Germany. Anyway, if we scroll down a bit, we see that ah, the secondary impedance is 4 ohms. That's for the speaker. Primary impedance, 8.2 kilo ohms. Primary current, max 35 milliamps. Um, in the last lecture, we computed a plate current of 37 milliamps. Uh, close enough. So if we plug those numbers into this expression here, we have a reflected impedance of 8.2 kilo ohms, a load impedance of 4 ohms, and if we divide those and take the square root of that, we get a turns ratio of 45.3, which isn't anywhere on that web page. And I want to emphasize that this 8.2K is not an intrinsic property of the transformer. It's only meaningful relative to this 4 ohms. If you had an 8 ohm speaker, you would have a 16.4K reflected impedance.